we have some more Cyberpunk 2077 news to take a look at. What is probably one of the most anticipated games of the year and perhaps even the decade is having quite an extreme diversity in reactions and responses. As some people are having a bug filled and just overall problem some experience while others are just enjoying the game pretty blissfully. Despite this, despite there definitely being controversies on several aspects, whether it be the bugginess, console FPS issues, or even just the gameplay itself, CDPR has been relatively quiet about this, not issuing a major statement on Twitter. No, though, just yesterday, we did get a nice update for the game. I made a video then looking at this update and what it actually added in, and it was a positive one, definitely a good response without actually giving a verbal response to some of the criticisms. CDPR actually has given a couple of responses around some of the issues that have popped up, just not as directly such as on their Twitter. One such one actually came with a bit of an interview with the CEO, but also in some changes to internal policy season, their bonus structure, which I think is actually quite telling. There's a lot to dissect around that. There's some refunds being issued for this already, so we'll have details on that as well as the stock price has definitely taken a hit. If you guys enjoy the content or want to stay up to date with Cyberpunk 2077, you can get subscribed. But otherwise, let's first take a look at this recent interview between the CDPR CEO as well as Bloomberg. An important disclaimer with this one, although it tackles or touches on several of the major issues with the game, this seems to have been filmed slash posted on the more morning of December 10th, so the game was out in the hands of consumers for nearly 12 hours with PC users, but not quite as long for console users. And although bugs were definitely known and being talked about widely, even just hours after the console and PC release, it is just important to note, it's not like they had days of reflection here. One of the first things asked about were review scores and seeing if they were disappointed that they were a bit lower than expected. The CEO was pretty quick to say that they're actually pretty happy, they think perhaps expectations were just a bit too high overall, people expecting 95 review scores while the 91 to 92 where it sat at the time was actually pretty solid. We'll touch on where review scores stand now in a moment, but then there's also the question of their kind of response or opinions on the real-time reactions from players, people getting their hands on the game, playing it, and what do they think? The reaction to some of the bugginess being reported, at least initially. And I think the response here is notable, so I just want to play it for you for you to listen to what he actually has to say on this. But obviously with uh, this size of game uh, and, and an open world and and, uh, endless possibilities for gamers. Uh, there are certain problems, there are certain bugs. Uh, right now, it's a very crucial moment for us because uh, we are looking uh, at real-time gamers' feedback and uh, seeing if there are any uh, repetitive problems and uh, what should be fixed. I think this is really visible on PC. Yesterday on Steam, we had uh, right after um, 1 a.m. Polish time when the game opened up for everyone uh, across the world, uh, we had 1 million concurrent players. So. One million concurrent players with, uh, I would say, a um, couple hundred thousand different PC configurations. So quite a lot of possibilities of something going wrong. Maybe someone uh, didn't install the drivers or there is a problem with the sudden configuration. We are definitely looking in, into that. That was uh, very similar in case uh, of Witcher 3. Uh, but here, you know, the, the sheer number of people was several times higher. So obviously there are some problems reported. So to me, I found this kind of frustrating, but also perhaps somewhat telling. So now that response overall, that a million people playing your game, the various combinations of hardware, perhaps having driver issues or not downloading the latest drivers that just popped up are all super valid points to make and likely even true for some cyberpunk players. But to me, it just speaks to be a total mischaracterization of the actual situation. To chalk up some of the bugs to crazy hardware combinations or somebody not having the appropriate drivers installed seems crazy. I mean, you had numerous reviewers encountering the same problem over and over again. You had numerous players encountering the same problem over and over again. It doesn't really seem like some of these bugs just popped up as a result of a weird hardware combination. I don't see any way CD Projekt could have missed some of these. I think they had to come to the terms where, all right, to some degree, we are launching a buggy game. Perhaps they hoped it would be less buggy. Perhaps in their internal testing, some of the bugs weren't actually showing up. But the scale and frequency of some of these bugs or even some of the crashing, I doubt was shocking or surprising to them. I just think that's impossible. And there's also been no mention of consoles throughout all of that focusing on the PC side where the bugginess and crashing problems definitely seem to be on the lesser side. And although this response is a couple of days old now, it is interesting to compare and contrast it to the internal changes that are going on at CD Projekt. As just yesterday, it was reported by Bloomberg that an internal message was sent out to CD Projekt Red employees. So it was sent out to staff and then seemingly has been leaked online or at least leaked to Bloomberg 
Gutenberg specifically. Before we get into what exactly was changed, we first should establish how the bonus structure worked for employees at CD Projekt. So the way bonuses would work would be that as you're working with your team, your team leader would give out tokens to their team members that did excel in a given period. Then later on, those tokens could be redeemed for a bonus if certain milestones were hit. Specifically, it seems like if the game released before a certain date and if it hit a certain score threshold. Likely having those criteria, kind of those optional objectives, would affect the overall bonus received per token. And it seems like that CD Projekt realized, okay, perhaps this is not a good system and actually changed it. As it seems like this internal email did say, we initially had a bonus system that was focused on the game's ratings and the release date, but after consideration, we believe that measure is simply not fair under these circumstances. We understand the lengths and complexity involved to make this a reality, and still you did everything you could to deliver an ambitious, special game. And it seems like this was sent from the top level, some of the executives and higher tier management, almost certainly the CEO we just heard from before had a role in this decision. So now when I read this headline, that CDPR management was taking responsibility for the bugs that trying to put it on the employees, or hey, even just that they messed up on a managerial side and it's not people having weird or different combinations of hardware, I was excited. But in hindsight, I feel like knowing the context, knowing how this bonus structure would work, it's more so getting rid of a bad bonus structure. So although it's a good step in the right direction, it's not like this is a hugely good step overall. It's more like they were in the red and now they stepped more to the neutral point. The overall employee bonus getting impacted by review scores is pretty artificial when individual employees aren't going to have a huge impact on the overall review score. I'm sure many employees would have liked the game to be delayed more and that would have led to a higher review score. It's the management making those types of decisions, not individual employees who would be receiving this bonus. And of course, we've historically seen how having bonuses structured around review scores could be problemsome. And that's not even to mention the oddity with review codes in general. How review codes were sent out very last minute, like just five days before the game launched, and several people that typically got review codes that got review codes for The Witcher 3 didn't get review codes. If you're an employee sitting there trying to figure out how big your bonus may or may not be, that probably is a little bit nerve wracking. Also, I find the statement interesting because I imagine CD Projekt expects this review score to go down more. Right now, it's actually held. There haven't been many additional reviews after that first wave, but a couple have come out. And if this is a sign as to what's to come in the future, the review score is definitely going down, most of these being below a 90 score and maintaining that 90 average that it's kind of landed at. Seems like it's dropped about a point from 91. Although conversely, something that is interesting is some of the user review scores that have popped up around Cyberpunk. One of the first ones to take a look at is actually the Steam review score for the game has been rising. Closer to release, it was at 70 to 72 percent, but now we are approaching 80 percent in just a couple of days. The first post-launch patch definitely seems to have benefited that, and we see a similar story, although not quite as extreme, on Metacritic. User reviews have gone up for Cyberpunk on Metacritic, and although on PC it is okay at a 6.5, on consoles it is abysmal. Being at a 3.1 and 2.5 at the time of recording, this has been climbing over the past 24 hours. It seems like it was actually in the ones at one point on PlayStation 4. For whatever reason, these user reviews are actually only on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, not on PlayStation 5 and the Series X. I don't know why that is. I imagine on next gen, they would be a lot better, but it's also important to note there are basically no console reviews yet. And you have to imagine once those console specific reviews or people that didn't get review codes day one actually take their time to curate and produce a nice and good review, this review score is only going to go down. I definitely think Cyberpunk's going to find itself in one of those weird situations where the first reviews will be super positive, but similar to the Outer Worlds. Over time, I think this will kind of fall a bit in players' eyes, of course, due to the bugginess, but even other factors. Then a few months down the line, once most of the bugs are addressed, we could see things pop back up. But of course, at that point, most people probably won't be conducting the reviews anymore. Another interesting point with this is the stock price actually fell about 30% since the release of this game. So in just a couple of days, it had a massive drop. It definitely seems like a huge factor for this was the negative reviews, as well as the initial bugginess that players were reporting. It does create a certain uncertainty with the stock. This is a huge game for them. Could having additional time spent on bug fixing delay DLCs, delay multiplayer, but also there's just a factor of many people getting off the train, holding the stock until the major catalyst with release, but then moving on to other things or wanting to pull your money out because the future is way less known now. Although with a stock drop this significant, I imagine CDPR will have some kind of response at some point, likely to investors specifically, just going over some of the data. They mentioned that they should have certain figures available before Christmas, so it's another point to keep an eye on to see how things evolve or are reactive as far as the 
stock price goes, not even just the review scores or community sentiment. Although on a positive note, the pre-order sales for this game have actually covered the development and marketing cost of the game. So effectively, the game has already paid for itself. Of course, that's not all the costs of the company, it's just the cost for Cyberpunk more specifically and not even for things like expansions yet. Although people are requesting and getting refunds for this game. In particular on Xbox, there's been many reports of Xbox being quite forgiving or just very enabling of refunds for Cyberpunk 2077. Seems like many people are having the most success requesting refunds based off an Xbox One copy and playtime on the Xbox One, where people are getting responses in just minutes, especially if you have low playtime. There's been some reports of people with higher playtime, like 20 hours plus, getting denied. On Steam, it seems like if you go over that two hour threshold, which is just a common Steam refund policy, you will not get a refund. But overall, it definitely seems like Xbox is being pretty good about the refund policy. I would argue that it is genuinely warranted if you're getting under 20 FPS at points, just having a lot of crashing and other bugs in your game, that you probably should get a refund, even if you just wait a few months to buy the game once it's patched better, or even just wait for next gen. Although I definitely don't enjoy or encourage people playing for 25 hours, then requesting for a refund. Like at that point, you probably should know if you are enjoying the game or what level of bugginess to expect from it. You can't just say, oh, I was surprised there were so many bugs and I want my money back after beating the game. Overall though, as it stands with last gen base versions of consoles, I do want to see where things go from here. I'm pretty curious. We just got an update yesterday and it definitely seems to have nice performance games pretty much across the board. It seems like at the point of recording this video, some people are reporting the Xbox patch just went live. It launched initially on PC and PlayStation, was a bit delayed on Xbox, but about 24 hours later or so, it looks like it may be shipping out. But I do wonder how much updating Cyberpunk 2077 can get on last gen consoles. How high can they get that FPS? We got improvements, but can they get it to a solid 30 fairly consistently with dips to 25 and not much under? Also, how much time and money are they going to invest in maintaining last gen? As time goes on, more and more people will be moving away from that. I can't imagine there's going to be a ton of sales of the game on old gen consoles going forward, especially with this recent controversy. It makes me worried we'll almost hit a giving up point to them where they'll be like, all right, well, it's good enough. Now we're going to really focus on DLC as well as patching it on next gen and PC. In fairness, nothing has indicated that that will be happening. It's just something I'm kind of concerned of and I've seen some other people talking about. Either way though, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. As always, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative, but until next time, I hope to see you all later.